you doing? This is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part two of our four-part Commander Anthology Spotlight series, where we look at the four decks that will be featured in June 9th's Commander Anthology release. Now, all four of these decks are reprints of former Commander products that came out over the years. The one we looked at yesterday was the Heavenly Inferno deck that originally came out in 2011. Today we're going to deep dive into the Evasive Maneuvers deck, which came out as one of the Commander 2013 decks. Now if you saw yesterday's video, you know what to expect here. We're going to look at the deck list, kind of break down what the deck does, and we're also going to look at the financial value of the original printing of these cards so that you at least have an idea of what kind of value this product is going to yield for you. And at the end of the day, is this something you want to pick up or something you're going to pass on? Now, quickly, before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to support the channel, one of which is our Amazon affiliate storefront. I do want to warn you, though, I did put a link to the Commander Anthology product down below. But as of the time of the recording, there's only a few sellers on Amazon selling this. And I feel like the price point's a little high. So you may want to check it maybe in a few hours or the next day as more sellers add product to see if that price point comes down a little bit. Feels a tad high to me, at least at this point. So you may want to take your time on that. Second way to support us is through Patreon. Check out the link below. And we're actually really close to one of our next goals. That's always appreciated. Now, having said that, let's get into the information for today and quick recap, just in case you didn't see yesterday's video. This product, of course, comes out on June 9th and it has a suggested retail price of $164.99. Of course, it comes with the counters that you see in the box pictured here, as well as your four decks. One thing I don't think I mentioned in yesterday's video, Wizards did say the commander, which I assume is the one featured commander for each deck, will be in foil. So the Kalia from yesterday, that'll be in foil. And going forward, the other commanders that we'll look at, those will be in foil. All right. So the four decks we saw yesterday, Heavenly Inferno. So check out yesterday's video for details on that, originally from 2011. Today, of course, we'll look at Evasive Maneuvers from 2013. Tomorrow, we'll be back with Guided by Nature from Commander 2014. And then finally, Plunder the Graves the next day from Commander 2015. Now, having said that, let's talk about this Evasive Maneuvers deck. So really, quick snapshot of the deck. What is it trying to do is the first question. If you like flicker effects, this is probably the deck for you. One of the core mechanics here are enters the battlefield effects and flicker mechanics. And I always like those sort of nuanced strategies. I don't know. Personally, I think this will be a fun deck to play. It also has a control magic sub theme. There's a lot of ways to either exchange creatures or steal creatures from your opponent, stuff like that. There's also a lot of different ways to tap and untap things. So you can kind of time things right to get in for a lot of damage in one turn, that type of thing. So I do like the deck. One thing I want to point out compared to yesterday's deck, which had a really high value attached to it, this one is going to be a lot less. Now, this deck came out two years later than the original one and probably had a much higher print run, I'd imagine, than that 2011 series of Commander decks, which I think had a much lower print run back in those days. So that could be part of the reason. But let's jump in and see what is in this deck and exactly what these cards are valued at currently. We'll start off, of course, with the Commander, Derevi Imperial Tactician. Only 94 cents. Big, big difference from the commander we saw yesterday, right? But I do like this card. I mean, it makes sense in this deck. I like the ability that you can pay a blue, a white, and a green, and in one to put it from your command zone right into play. So as the game goes on and the cost becomes more and more expensive, you have a constant four cost to always put in play. That's kind of nice. And I also like the fact that it only costs three to put in play the first time. So you can get it out relatively early, at least a percentage of the time. Next, we have Rune of the Hidden Realms, 85 cents. Again, not super exciting. Now, this could exchange for your commander in the deck if you wanted to. And as you can see here, it kind of starts the trend of some of these flicker effects and these enter the battlefield exploitation effects. Angel of Finality, $2.70, a little more value here. But then, of course, this is a good card to deal with some graveyard shenanigans. Next, we have a zombie lady of scrolls. And as you can imagine with this card, you're going to find some wizards and maybe even a changeling in this deck to help you get the ability to happen. But I don't know how consistent it will be. There's not like a huge abundance of wizards. I want to call this wizard tribal or anything like that, but there's enough to make this card work. Next, we have Bane of Progress at $1.99. Good way to clear the board of problematic artifacts or enchantments. Jinn of Infinite Deceits, 35 cents. 
And this is a nice blocker on the air, 2-7, but you also start to see sort of the stealing abilities start to come into play with this card. Exchange control of two target non-legendary creatures. You can't activate this ability during combat, but if you have a couple like small creatures or 1-1 tokens or something like that, you can get a lot of value out of that ability. Dungeon Geists. 29 cents for this card. I was a little surprised. I think this is actually the last time this card was printed, and it feels like this card's always around. Maybe because it always shows up in the MTGO cubes or something like that, but it is a good card. Karmic Guide. This was reprinted not too long ago. Only worth $2.49 now. The reprint really brought the value down, but it's still a really good card. It helps you recur something directly from your graveyard to the battlefield. Kazandu Tusk Caller at 45 cents. This is a nice consistent way, as long as you can devote the mana and the time to it, to be able to produce some decent sized tokens, 3 3 elephants. Luzun Scholar General. This is an interesting card. It has curiosity built into it and has horsemanship. So it's only worth 38 cents, but I can almost guarantee you it's going to be good for some easy card draw at times because probably not going to see a whole lot of other cards with horsemanship on the battlefield. Mirror Entity. This is a changeling that's been reprinted a lot, only worth 94 cents, but it is very, very powerful. This is an extremely powerful, potentially game ending card at times. Merkfiend Liege, another card that isn't financially worth a whole lot at $2, but it's another very good and powerful card. You're getting a 4-4 creature, plus it buffs all your other green creatures, plus 1, plus 1, and blue creatures, plus 1, plus 1. And if a creature has both green and blue characteristics, it gets plus 2, plus 2. That's kind of awesome. But maybe more importantly, on each of your player's untap steps, you get to untap all your blue and or green creatures that you control. That's actually kind of awesome. So again, financially not a huge card, but a very powerful one at times. Next we have Phantom Nantuko at 29 cents. This is a card that can really make combat difficult at times for your opponent. Rubina Soul Singer. This was originally from Legends. This is an older card and she's only worth 40 cents, but again, another card that's going to help you perhaps gain control of your opponent's creatures. Okay, let's move on to our uncommon creatures. There's a couple pages here, so we'll go through them pretty quick. Acidic Slime, classic card. It's been reprinted a whole lot, but it's fantastic with flicker effects. Only worth 21 cents, though. Airy Mystics at 15 cents. Good way to protect your creatures, but keep in mind it gives them Shroud and not Hexproof. Deceiver Exarch, classic card, $1.03. Diviner Spirit, 22 cents. Fiend Hunter at 25 cents, and Flicker Wisp at $2.61. Another card that was reprinted not too long ago, and because of that, the value has come down a little bit on it. But again, this is a great Flicker effect built into this creature because it can actually hit any permanent on the battlefield. Not just yours, not just creatures, it can hit anything you want. How to Spy Patrol, only worth 17 cents, but if you can invest the mana into it, it's very hard to deal with. Miss Metal Witch at 21 cents, another Exile Return to the Battlefield effect. Selesnia Guild Mage is actually another very powerful card if you have the mana to put into it. 19 cents. Skyward Eye Profits at 18 cents. Stone Cloaker, 24 cents. Couple good entries of Battlefield effects there. And Wonder, another very strong card. Only worth 33 cents, but great if you can get it into the graveyard. And then you get some common creatures with Farhaven Elf at 85 cents. Pilgrim's Eye at 15 cents. Thornwind Fairies at 16 cents, and finally Winged Coddle at 21 cents. All right, let's move on to the sorceries. We'll begin with the rares, starting with Guitar's Wrath at 40 cents. This is a board sweep. I mean, most of these decks contain some kind of board sweep. This is the one for this deck. Tempt with Glory at 32 cents. Now, this Magic 2013 product had a whole series of these Tempt cards with Tempting Offering as a mechanic, and they're actually a pretty cool concept. Basically, you get to buff your stuff, your opponents then get to buff their stuff, but if they do, you get to buff your stuff more. <laughs> so it's a cool idea. The white one may be one of the least exciting ones out of the group, but there you go. I, I kind of wish they would play around with this mechanic a little more sometime in the future. Next we have our Uncommons, Borrowing 100,000 Arrows, which I love the name of that card, 27 cents. Restore, which is actually a unique card, 28 cents, and Wash Out for 74 cents. All right, let's move on to the instance with the rares. And we have Aether Mage's Touch at 29 cents, another card that was recently reprinted. And we have Bloon Sun's Zenith, which is the card draw spell for this deck. Now, there's better card draw spells out there. This is an easy upgrade, but this one, 92 cents. It is an instant, though. I will give it that. 
unexpectedly absent. This is a card that was originally printed in this Magic 2013 product. It finally got a reprint in Eternal Masters not too, too long ago. The card's only worth 91 cents now. Prior to its reprint, it was actually much higher. It's a good card. It's a great commander card and a great cube card. A couple of uncommons with Crows and Grip at $1.50. Fantastic card for getting rid of artifacts or enchantments. It has split second, so it can't be countered. You find this a lot of times coming out of sideboards in Modern or even Legacy. And Selesnya Charm at $0.38. Cents. Arcane Denial is your common, and it's worth more than a lot of the other cards in the set that aren't common. $3.40. Basically, this is a hard counter that replaces itself. The drawback being your opponent gets to draw two cards off of it. But considering a hard counter for blue and one, I feel like the fact that you're still drawing a card off of it helps negate the downside enough to make this actually pretty good. Artifacts. Let's see what we have here, starting with the Rares Conjurer's Closet, a consistent way to hit some of those flicker effects at $1.75. Surveyor Scope, $0.34. Cents. You get a Sword of Herons, worth $0.41. Cents. Thousand Year Elixir. This is actually the highest value card in the whole deck currently at $5.69. It's a good ability. It's cheap to cast. It doesn't give your creatures haste, but it gives their abilities a quasi haste basically where you're able to tap creatures and use their ability as soon as they come onto the battlefield that's actually pretty cool and it even can untap something if you needed to okay let's move on to the uncommons you'll find some color fixing here but a couple other interesting things you have azorius key rune worth 19 cents basalt monolith a dollar 56 awesome card it's been printed a number of times but it's great for ramping into bigger stuff quickly dark steel ingot 46 cents always great to have if you play commander Leonin Blade Trap at $0.17, cents. Soul Ring at $3.06. I gushed about this card yesterday, so I won't go into all the gory detail again, but this is an awesome card. It gets printed a lot in these Commander products. That's helping to keep the price down, but it's phenomenal if for some reason you don't have a copy. Swift Foot Boots at $0.48. Cents. Maybe not quite as good as Lightning Greaves in some situations, but it's still pretty good. And Thunder Staff at $0.18. Cents. And you get a couple Signets. Celestia Signet for $0.22, cents. Simic Signet is $0.20. Cents. Signets are great to have for Commander if you don't have them already, or if you're trying to build a cube, they can be very good there too. All right, let's look at the enchantments. And we got a rare with Flicker Form, $0.44. Cents. Another way to consistently hit those enters the battlefield flickers. And we'll move on to the uncommon, starting with a card that helps the whole Control Magic package with the original Control Magic, $0.63. Cents. You have three Curses. Now, Curse is another thing they were kind of messing around in in this 2013 product, so they tried to give you some unique Curses for multiplayer. Uh, some aren't as good as others, obviously. Curse of Inertia, $0.17. Cents. That one's okay. Curse of Predation, maybe the better one of the three here, $0.19. Cents. And then Curse of the Forsaken at 18 cents, maybe my least favorite of these three. Dark Steel Mutation, 73 cents, and then Leaf Drake Roost at 17. And finally, we have the one common enchantment is Presence of Gond, $1.86. So again, the common is doing some financial work in this particular deck, but it's a good card. I think a lot of people forget about this. Now, granted, yeah, you can be two for one with this at times, but at the very least, as long as you put this on a creature that doesn't have summoning sickness, you'll be getting a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior out of it. At least that's not nothing. All right, let's look at the lands. Again, you're not going to find any top tier lands here. Don't look for fetches or shocks. You're going to get really... Tier 2, Tier 3 lands at best. So they do help you fix your colors. They're serviceable, but obviously they're good points to upgrade if you do have better lands to throw in here. And we'll start off with the Uncommons. Fairy Conclave, $1.56. That's actually pretty good. Salt Crested Step, $0.24. Cents. Seaside Citadel, $1.67. Sajiri Refuge, at $0.36. Cents. Temple of the False God, at $0.34. Cents. And we'll move on to the Commons. Again, a lot of color fixing here. Azorius Chancery, at $0.30. Cents. Azorius Guildgate, at $0.17. Bant Panorama. This was actually the last time this card was printed. $0.23. Cents. Command Tower, always good to have if you don't have one for some reason for Commander, $1.24. The Omnipresent, Evolving Wilds, at $0.16. Cents. Opal Palace at $0.41, cents. another fantastic land for Commander, just to have in any of your Commander decks, quite honestly. And it's very affordable, even if you just go out and pick up the single, I would recommend doing it. But if you don't have a copy, you get one here. Rupture Spire at $0.19. Cents. 
All right, here's the rest of the common lands with Secluded Step, and that's worth 17 cents. Selesnia Guildgate at 19, Selesnia Sanctuary at 28, Sima Guildgate at 20 cents, and then you have the brother or sister card to Evolving Wows at 20 cents, Terramorphic Expanse, and finally Trans Guild Promenade at 16 cents. As for basic lands, you will find yourself six forests, seven islands, and seven planes. Now, assuming that the basic lands are negligible as far as value, what do all these cards add up to value-wise currently at the time of recording? The grand total is $58.53. Okay, so nowhere near as good as yesterday's deck. But like I said at the top of the video, this deck did come out two years later, and I feel like the print runs were much higher in 2013 compared to 2011. So I think that's driving price points quite a bit. Now, if you compare this to yesterday's deck, of course, that came out to a value of $135.13. Today, $58.53, but it does bring us to a total so far of $193.66 with two more decks to look at. So price point-wise, again, at least at the time of recording, this feels like a pretty good deal, even if you do pay MSRP for it at $164.99. Now, do keep in mind, though, once this product does come out and hit shelves, a lot of the values will start to creep down a little bit because more cards will be entering the environment. So that's important to keep in mind. However, there might be some additional gravity towards some of these new foils, like the Kalia we looked at yesterday, for example. All right, having said that, that's the information for today. We're going to be back tomorrow with part three to this series, then wrap it up the next day. And hopefully by then you'll have a good idea of whether this is a product that you'll be interested in or if it's something you just feel like you want to pass on. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.